Welcome everyone to Elevate with V. So excited to be here with everyone today. So this podcast was inspired by my own healing journey. I aspire to share amazing healers and coaches to help each of us elevate on our journey so we can keep aligning with our soul's calling and gifts. I can't wait to introduce my guest today, Nicole. She's incredibly loving, gifted, joyful, generous, and playful spirit. I've had the opportunity to get to know her and experience her gifts over the past few months, and it's really, it's been a joy. And I've expanded so much. I can't wait to share her with all of you. So I'm going to read a little bit of Nicole's bio. She is a writer and poet of the cosmos, a teacher of spirituality and consciousness, an energetic practitioner, Akashic reader, psychic medium, channel, and mystic. She is here to change <laughs> the world one heart at a time. So welcome, Nicole. Oh, thank you, love. Thank you for having me. I, I am so excited to be here too. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm so excited to have you here to join me and all the way from across the world, right? This is what I love about being able to do a podcast where you can have people from anywhere in the world. So I love it. I love your little beachy scene. If you want to share where you're at, I was like, yes, we're feeling the vibes. <laughs> Um, I'm at the moment, I'm down in Sydney, Australia. So this is, um, my background right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I live about an hour South of Sydney and right by the beach, a block from the beach. So every morning I go up and watch sunrise and watch the sunrise over the ocean here on the East coast. And yeah, very much in or around the water all the time. I surf, I surf almost every day and um the ocean has played a huge part in my spiritual path for sure mm. i love that because we're gonna dig into it nicole so you know as you know this show is all about highlighting and showcasing healing journeys so i was going to ask you what event or events kind of led you into that space of diving into your personal healing journey Oh, even as you were just speaking, then I sort of started going, okay, what is the pinpoint moment? What what was the one moment if there is just one, right? Because I feel like it's always a combination um, of many moments. Yes. And I was shown a memory of where I was. I was standing in my lounge room and I was talking to a girlfriend and she just said, I can't believe the person that you are with everything that's happened to you and everything that's happened in your past i can't believe that you can still be kind right and i said to her in that moment i've decided i've chosen to choose love right and as soon as i spoke the words out loud it changed everything for me so that was probably about six or seven years ago i was standing in my lounge room and i just said i choose love it doesn't matter what's happened to me. It doesn't matter what is to come. I choose love. I choose to respond from love. I choose to act from love. And then all of a sudden that started like turning the journey inwards too. Okay. So if I'm looking at my healing, how can I do this from a place of love for myself? Right. Without the shame or the guilt. And so then just started the layers, you know, it's never like you just, spend a weekend or a month or a year going deep into your own healing it's always just a layer and then a layer and then a layer so yeah that was the start that was the start when i decided when i chose to respond and be love yeah wow so but what led you to that moment i mean i'm assuming there were many many things that have happened along <clears throat> from your childhood up to that moment where you would have been like wow there's different things that are coming up like how did you even know to yeah. work with them or to start doing that well if we take it back a few years prior um yeah i had uh definitely a lot of things to work on from my childhood from my 20s from my 30s and i think the climatic moment for me was um, my stepmom got sick when I was about 37 and I was traveling back and forward to New Zealand for her palliative care, kind of tag teaming with my sister. And her and I, my um, stepmother and I became very close in that last year that she was here. 
And I realized with her passing that I, my life was short and I had the choice of to be upset or angry or hold on to hurt or resentment or hold on to fear, or I could, I could start to choose me, choose love, choose um, what I wanted my life to look like. So there, that kind of set off a chain of events of really what is it that I want my life to look like her passing. Um, she was a formidable woman and an acute businesswoman, very successful, very tough. And in the 20, 20 years that I knew her, that last year was absolutely incredible. And we, we just absolutely unconditionally love. She taught me what unconditional love was in that last year, you know, and I taught her too. So then every single relationship in my life got a second look. Uh, I ended my relationship with my husband two months after she passed. Like that was, so I would have to say that was the, the instigating point of my healing journey and really wanting my happiness or my peace and calm to be paramount above anything else or anyone else, including my children, including my husband, it was like, no, if I'm good, if I'm happy, then they will be happy. Yeah. And he, um, he didn't like that choice. <laughs> didn't like so, that choice. So where, where did you step when you made that decision, Nicole, that you're going to focus on yourself and your healing? What did you start yeah. doing? What were your steps? Yeah. So I'd already been doing uh, yoga for many years up until that point. I had gone to many retreats um i was doing yoga probably three four five times a week uh with a studio so that was already in play and i was very fit and very supple in my body and you know looked like i was healthy looked like i was good but on the inside my heart my mind these were just not in alignment with what the exterior presented if that made sense my diet was very clean so i just looked like i was healthy um and so what happened after that is I started meditating and I'd always kind of dabbled, but never really took it seriously. And uh, a very dear friend of mine uh, practiced and taught a form of meditation called Keely meditation, which is spelled K-E-L-E-E. -E. It was founded in San Diego and we have an Australian outreach of that. Um, so, I started doing that meditation, Keely meditation, like every morning, every night, five minutes, 10 minutes, that's it. And journaling, okay? So that practice is tied together, tied together the meditation and the journaling, the meditation and the journaling. And all you were doing was journaling about your experience within the meditation, right? But what it does is it sets up the practice. So this meditation focused on stillness that was key for me. It was the only place where I felt, you know, with three small children <laughs> that I had stillness. So the stillness and the journaling started then the, my marriage broke down. I started meditating and that was the start. Um, and over the years, there has been times where I've fallen off and come back and fallen off and come back to it. But the results I was getting and the compartments that were being released from my psyche were incredible from the get-go so it was kind of like i was having so many new insights about things that i'd held onto or the way i saw a situation or the emotion i had attached to it all of a sudden i was seeing it with a new insight and it, it was just like oh you know you're really having to look at it and go oh wow that's I'm seeing this with fresh eyes and so some things are really hard to look at especially when it's about 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 my behavior or how I responded or reacted or, you know, my role that I played in it. And, and there was this outpouring of love or forgiveness or compassion to others that played roles in my life too. All of a sudden, it wasn't about um, my story, holding on to whatever it deemed was the story. You know, my sense of self changed because I no longer wanted to be a part of that story, if that makes sense. So it's all, it all kind of flowed. It was, it was not like genuine markers. And it's not to say I didn't stumble or fall during that time or, 
revert back or it was very much uh, a practice you know so and then probably I guess probably right before COVID maybe six months or so maybe a year before COVID I really started stepping into it I had an awakening moment or an experience where I was held within God um and that kind of just changed everything all of a sudden i was like oh what's going on here this doesn't just feel like you know a normal kind of experience i was starting to see visions um i was having more intuitive hits and i'd always been intuitive and i'd always had visions but i always kind of shut them down or dismissed them you know i was just fanciful or i'm dreaming or whatever and it all just started coming um, a lot faster, a lot thicker. And I was trying to understand it or process it. And then once I really started getting into my spiritual practice and opened up to Reiki and energy healing, and then I started studying hypnotherapy and different modalities, NLP. Um, I did another form of Reiki. I, you know, it was just like I couldn't get enough. I couldn't get enough. And then it all just exploded. Then it was like everybody was here to party. So, yeah, <laughs> I feel like that was a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good because, you know, it's kind of like just trying to understand what the journey was, right? And it seems like you um, were able to do some of it, obviously, yourself when you went into the practices of like the meditation and the journaling, like you created things for yourself. And then mm -hmm. as you were flowing, you said you had that moment where something really big shifted for you. And, you know, that led you on a slightly different path. And then I know for a lot of us who um, are on our healing journeys, we get to a place where suddenly it's like, I want to learn that and I want to learn this and I want to learn that. And then <laughs> you like start to dabble into all these different courses. Um, and, you know, obviously you've done a lot of different things that, you know, we each get to experience, uh, you know, Nicole and I connected on Clubhouse and she has spaces where we get to um, see her share a lot of her gifts and her teachings, which is uh, so beautiful. Um, but I love that you shared that. And I think one of the things I wanted to ask you about is more of kind of your childhood. You said that you were aware of being intuitive. Did you have gifts that were already opened up as a child and you were like kind of keeping them silent did you fit into your family did you not fit into your family what was that like oh boy Vanita. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh yeah I was I was um a very intuitive child I would most definitely have experiences that couldn't be explained um I would say things um and it would be shut down or i would know what someone was going to say and it would be dismissed or someone would ask a question that i shouldn't know the answer to and i knew it and uh i had uh i had a father who um did not appreciate being shown up by a child. That's all I'll say there. Um, so yes, my guides were my imaginary friends. So for anyone or any child that says they have imaginary friends, know that this is a possibility that it's their guides. Um, I definitely my main guide, I remember having like I keep getting shown the same image of me playing on the swing set and he's on the other swing you know talking to me as a child like I'm there by myself and I'm talking to him there so there's definitely been experiences um throughout and even in my teenage years I would know uh the number before someone said it I knew what somebody was going to say I knew what was going to happen like I'm talking moment to moment I'm not talking in far into the future, I'd be in conversation with someone and know exactly what they're about to say. So um, I would have visions of things happening and then they would happen. Um, I had a near death experience at 12 where it was a motorcycle accident. 
um, there's been all through my life, I've come very close and never broken a bone, never lost anything. I don't have anything removed from my body. I don't have a feeling in my teeth. I don't, I've had surfboard accident where I should have lost all of my teeth and they just were moved around a little bit. Um, and it's like, uh, indestructible, I think is the word for it. So when I was, um, in my twenties and I became a chef, I was definitely a very intuitive chef. Definitely. I would say that, um, always I cooked, uh, with my intuition and I would refer to myself as an intuitive cook. Um, I could see a recipe or I could read a recipe or see it being made on the TV and know exactly how it was supposed to taste and be able to make it. Um, I could taste something and know the process of how to make it. Um, so there was a lot that I used within my work that relied on that. And it was easy to kind of um, do that because uh, it was just seen as, oh, she's a gifted chef. <laughs> you know, When I was married to my ex-husband, spirituality is not something that he believed in or even believes in to this day. So... I, I was not anything that I felt on this side of my life didn't exist in that marriage, wasn't allowed to exist in that marriage, didn't feel safe to be shown or expressed in that marriage. And so my gifts were shut down for a very, very long time by myself or others. So it's almost like I've come back to me. And even when I started doing this work, my mum said that child version of you is back and I haven't seen her for a long time, mm. you know? So my mum is very intuitive too, um, but she never was able to express it or, you know? So uh, it's a privilege and an honour to be able to do it in, in this lifetime. Um, it's definitely been a lot of my healing around my fear of my gifts, around the fear of people seeing me with my gifts. Like that's been a huge part of my healing journey because it is, it feels like the most vulnerable thing I can do, you know, to actually be in full expansion with my gifts. And um, now it only brings me joy you know <laughs> and it brings others joy and i think how could anyone ever stop someone from using or playing with their gifts because all they are here to do is bring others joy and how could you stop that what kind of person would stop that just because you don't believe or understand how can you stop another human being from living their truth so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's powerful, Nicole, very powerful. And, um, you know, I just I wondered, I was like, okay, you had to have had these gifts like growing up, but, you know, you just didn't get the support. I'm glad that your mom like, was at least she understood, even if she couldn't necessarily help you to be able to express them, she understood just that alone. I was like, okay, that at least was nice that she just, she saw you, she saw who you were. And, um, you know, it's because she, she was, was ruled by the same hand, you know, so. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, right? Because we're in a place where we can look at our journey and as challenging as it's been so many um, twists and turns and, you know, things like that, it's like we had to go through that journey to sit where we're sitting right now for you to literally like stand in your power now, right? And to say, all of that had to happen. I had to go through all of this stuff where I can now like really embrace who I am. And like you said, it just brings you joy and they're your gifts and you should be able to freely share them. And I think we are quite fortunate in this lifetime that we're getting that opportunity because a lot of us have had many lifetimes where that was 
just not a possibility. We just not never were able to go beyond a certain point. And so it's very exciting, right? There's something very exciting about these times. Um, so if there's anything you want to add so. to that. Yeah, there's something that they're wanting me to say right now. And I think um, I didn't know I was going to get so emotional or so raw with that. But there's something that they're wanting me to share is that if you've had a similar experience and you're kind of uh, beating yourself up because, you know, you feel like you're 20 years behind the ball right where you're like oh i'm only just opening to my gifts now i had them as a child but they were shut down and now I'm... no they want you to know that your gifts have always been there you opening the door is them in full expansion okay it's trusting your gifts because it's not about oh i'm 20 years behind everyone else no no your gifts have been there in full the whole time it's literally you just being able or feeling safe enough or feeling like you're ready to open the door and they're all there and then it's just a matter of you playing with them to get to know them that's it play 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 yeah yes i love that nicole that's so true and you know i think for a lot of us, I know that when I first came on Clubhouse, it would be kind of my spiel of like, oh, well, I'm quite early in my awakening journey. And then someone was like, um, you don't need to say that. It's all good. Like everybody's exactly where they need to be. And it's not about any kind of hierarchy. Like this is when you have chosen to step into those places where you're ready to embrace all those parts of you that already exist, but you're ready to embrace those parts of yourself, right? Yeah, we all know they're here. It's just you that's late to the party. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so true. It's so true. But I think that's part of the process, right? And if you think about it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's that time when we decide to put ourselves first and say that I'm going to focus and take care of myself and who am I? Who do I want to be? And then taking the time and energy to focus on that because everything we've been taught, Nicole, is that's selfish. Don't be spending time on yourself. You need to be spending time taking care of others. Like what kind of person spends their time focusing on themselves? It's like the complete opposite, right? And for each of us that are going through this journey, like that's what it is. It's an inside job. You got to go inwards and really explore all of those pieces and you know, it takes time. It's not just like suddenly all of a sudden, you know, you realize today and tomorrow you're like, okay, all my gifts are open and I'm ready to get out there. And <laughs> yeah, and it does take time. It does take time. And you may feel like I, I was using the the um, sort of metaphor last week of myself, like I was the little hermit crab that would kind of come out and then, oh, and then come back in and then come out and come back in. Is it safe to come out with these yet? Or, and then come back in. So, you know, it's, it can feel like that a little bit too. Um, you know, it is, it's true. When we were younger, it would be like, oh, you love yourself. You're full of it. You know, you're kind of conceited or arrogant or whatever. Now there is the rhetoric of you love yourself. You're full of your love. Like, you know, it's, it's that whole energy has shifted and changed. I think it's much more widely acceptable now for some to be actually pouring self-love on, on themselves and doing that healing work. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I definitely have been called selfish many, many, many times, you know, yeah. it's a conditioning, right? And those are the things that we get to work on, on our journey is all these external things that we allowed, we internalized the external things yes. that we internalized and believed to be our truths, even though they didn't mm -hmm. match us, right? Because we knew in our hearts, right? Like how you knew that you had all these gifts, you didn't necessarily have the support or the tools or the resources all you knew that it was not safe for you to share them you were totally yeah. shut down and that's what happens like you know I see myself as a black sheep and there were so many things that I just was like this just feels strange this feels off but there was no room for me to say anything and to say I don't fit in like I don't fit into what's going on here but I just had to kind of find a way to integrate 
into the system, right? That's been laid out, whether that's cultural, whatever that is for each person. And that was very challenging because it goes against your grain. It's almost like you're shutting off a part of yourself. Like you can't express a part of yourself. And we carry that with us, right? Because it's not safe and it's not understood. And finally, when you get a chance, as for me, when I was going through my journey, I was like, oh my gosh, is that really me? No, that's not me. That's what they wanted me to be. That's not who I am. You know, really questioning, questioning so many different aspects of ourself and through the journey, being able to choose and to say, okay, but what do I want? Who do I want to be? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Most definitely. It is, it is, it's, um, I feel like that's part of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the awakening process for so many. It's like, what is it that I like? What is it that I don't like? Many of us haven't even asked ourselves, like, if, especially if there's any kind of people pleasing coming into it, we're always like, when someone's like, oh, where do you want to go for dinner? <clears throat> I don't mind wherever you want to go, right? I had a client, I said to her, I said, where is your favorite place to have coffee? And she was like, dumbfounded by the question, right? I was like, okay, well, where is your favorite place to have dinner? Dumbfounded by the question. And I said, what do you mean? You don't have your favorite place? Where is your favorite coffee? Where is, well, I just go where everyone else wants to go, Mm -hmm. right? And I said, okay, this is your homework. (laughs) You need to find out what is your favorite place to have coffee where is it that what is your favorite food where is it that you like to eat the most what is it that you love to cook for you the most i said because that's even like the simplest thing because we are so conditioned to be you know easy going you know don't upset the cart or you know just you know go along with whatever is being offered right and it's that feeling of like well what is it that you like what is it that you like to cook for you you know, what is your favorite dish that you cook for you? What is it that you like to eat? What is it that you like to do? What's your favorite activity? What's your perfect Sunday look like, right? Because a lot of the times, and I'm talking for myself, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know. I was always told what to eat or told where we're going or whatever. And if I had a suggestion, it would be shut down. So it was kind of like, well, I, I don't want to argue. <laughs> you know, I want to try this place. No, 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 we're not going there. We're going here. Oh, okay. You know, you just be like, oh, okay. And so I think the part of the spiritual path is that discovery of what is it that I like to do? How do I like to do it? What is my way of meditating? Which way do I like to do it? Where do I want to be when I do it? Right. And so like for those that follow me on Instagram, Instagram and things like that my sunrises like I love being at sunrise every morning weather dependent I love being at sunrise every morning and doing my meditation by the beach and being with the elements even if it's windy even if it's sprinkling rain you know I like being with the elements as my first contact I like that time I like my coffee (laughs) you know it's like I know what I like I'm very um rigid I don't want to say rigid I don't like the word rigid I'm very um consistent (laughs) with what I like to do on a daily basis. But I feel like that consistency or that structure that I have for how my day begins allows for the flow through the the rest of the day. I check my emails, I check my calendar, I confirm anything I need to, and then I flow, right? So for me, it's like, okay, I know now what I like to do. I know what I want my day to look like. I've worked really hard to know that about myself. And then it's all flows on because all of a sudden I'm trusting myself, my rituals, my habits bring in that self love, that self trust. So when somebody says to me, oh, do you want to come to this dinner or do you want to come to this party? I'm like, I don't know. I don't answer straight away. You know, I'm I'm like, let me check my schedule. (laughs) If I ever say that to you in a response, (laughs) you know why I'm saying that. And I actually check in with myself. Is this something I want to go to? Is this something I want to be at? Do I want to be with these people? You know, and if I don't have something come straight up with those questions, I'll sleep on it. I don't need to respond to something straight away. You know, 
we have this culture where we need to be easygoing, we need to respond straight away, we need to give answers straight away. If I'm not sure about wanting to be somewhere, I will sit on it. That's not something I used to do because I would be so afraid before of offending someone or letting someone down. No, the only person I'm worried about offending or letting down is myself now, truly. I love myself more. Myself, my relationship with self is my highest priority. So it's like, if I'm feeling into an event and I'm like, no, actually, I, I, I don't really feel, I'm not really feeling it. <laughs> I'm not really feeling like I need to be there. I'm not really feeling like I want to be there. I'm not really feeling like it's something that I have to prove anything to, to be there. So I'll just say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy. Or you know what, um, I have other plans. And that might just be a bath. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but but that has come with knowing and working on that thing of like letting go of people pleasing and working on my boundaries. Like even this morning, I've had to kind of reach out to someone and say, hey, I don't want you to do this anymore. And they were like, oh, straight away. They were like, sorry, sorry. And I was like, no, 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 no need to apologize. I'm just saying, you know, I don't I don't want you to do this anymore. Okay, is that okay? And how are you? And what's going on for you? And do you know what I mean? So for me, it's like, I don't want to have any difficulty asking someone for money or speaking about money. I don't want to have any um, sort of resistance to saying to someone, I really like what you're doing or I don't like what you're doing here. I don't want to have any hesitation in being able to say yes or no to something. But all of that is done from a place of love. If I am triggered by something that someone writes to me or says to me, that's about me. So I pause and I leave my phone <laughs> or I say, hang on a sec, just give me a minute if I'm in conversation. And I just, I'm like, okay what is this coming up for me why do i need to feel this way why am i feeling this way and then i come back and i'll be like okay this is my response to that you know from a place of love what would love say what would love do here how would love respond and like even for my next door neighbor's kids when he starts talking back to his mom i'll say i just say to him what would jesus do here so <laughs> <laughs> because love might be too an abstract concept for him. But I'm like, all right, I've been teaching him and bringing in the energy of Jesus for him. And we've been playing with Jesus and things like that and separating Jesus from religion for him. And so anytime now that he mucks up, I'm like, what would Jesus do here? <laughs> it's not from a religious space. It's from a place of love. It's a, it's a concept that kids can grasp. So yeah, I, I love how that kind of energy can change everything that we do. So. Mm. Yes. Oh my God. That was so powerful, Nicole. And um, I know for, you know, all the listeners, everyone's in a different place in their journey. They could be somewhere in the beginning. They could be a little bit more kind of in the middle, you know, so it's like we're catching people at all different levels, but I love, love, love the questions that you asked. So, um, you know, for those that are listening, it's like, you know, pay attention to those questions. They're really good questions, just about <laughs> learning more about what you like. What are the things that you like? And what do you like to do? And, you know, we don't usually get asked those questions. We're so busy trying to just go with the flow and, you know, not cause any issues in a group. And, I mean, I think I've always been a person that if I see something and it doesn't feel right, I kind of want to say something. So I always have to be careful where and when, but I think it's also about questioning those things, right? To say, just because you did it five years ago, does it still apply? Does it still work? And, you know, that's the beauty of this journey is we really get to question so many things. And as we realize that we're not guided by other people's expectations, their judgments, it's always going to be there. But what do you feel? What do you feel is right? And to be okay with that choice, like Nicole said, I mean, I've done that plenty of times where someone will ask, you know, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? I'm just not feeling it. And I can be honest and say, you know what, 
I choose me. I want to do something for myself and it's okay. But I think that's one of the things that's been really interesting. And I don't know your experience, Nicole, but the more I kind of stand in a place of knowing myself and embracing who I am and doing things that I love, the smaller my circle has become. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are like, uh, yeah, I don't like this version of you. I like the version of you that was just like going with the flow and saying yes to everything. And, you know, I was like, I mean, it served its purpose, but it just doesn't work for me anymore. And I'm choosing myself. Not to say I don't love doing so many different things. There's so many things that I love, but I'm just recognizing that I'm doing them from a space of love for myself, self care mm -hmm. and self love. And um, yeah. so it is, it shifts a lot of things. And that is one part of the journey that is a little bit challenging when you realize that you do have to release and let go of a lot of people who are around you who are wonderful people, but mm -hmm. you're in a different place in your journey right now. And to just have grace with yourself and just say, it's okay. Feel sad about it because it is sad, right? When you release relationships, but then you know, once you've done that and you've allowed yourself to feel the things, you know, to come back to a spare space, I had to do this to be like, I understand the higher perspective that I need to release this so I can step into more of not only who I am, but to find more of those people who are in that same kind of vibration of, I too am focusing on my self-love and self-care yes. and where I stand. So, you know, a lot of shifts, a lot of shifts. Oh, most definitely. I feel like there is that saying of let God be God, right? Where if God is clearing your path, it's for a reason. It's for your expansion. It's for your growth. So let God be God. Okay. We don't know what's coming ahead. And so there may be like overarching messages or, or revelations that come forward from this path being cleared right now. Um, the other thing I think that plays a big part in it is in the spiritual path. Like once you've started on your spiritual path, um, you're becoming more sensitive, you're becoming more open to energy, you're feeling it. And it's almost like this rush where it's too much, right? I definitely went through that period of like, it was too much for me to be in crowds. It was too much for me to be anywhere that was busy. It's just too much because you're trying to filtrate all of this energy coming towards you. Um, that settles down. So don't worry. It's not to say I, I love being back in crowds, but um, I'm okay with it now. <laughs> I don't need to tap into everyone's energy. That's the difference. You're like, oh my God, I can feel everyone's energy. That's your choice. You can choose. I, I don't need to feel everyone's energy. I don't need to know what's going on in every person's head that walks past me. A, that would be a lot of rambling, maybe a bit boring and quite insensitive to their privacy. <laughs> So I don't need to do that. I don't need to check in with people's energy unless they ask me to. The other thing is too, is that um, what happens is with your spiritual path, you start letting go of attachment, start letting go of um, expectations of others, of yourself, start letting go of attachments of other people and yourself. But what that also allows is this room where all of a sudden you're not looking for external validation as much as what you were, right? So say for instance, if before you used to be, you know, a partier or, you know, the life of the party or the extrovert kind of energy, and then all of a sudden you're feeling yourself go introvert. The change there is the letting go of the attachment for external validation, right? So you don't need many people around you telling you how wonderful you are or jizzing up your energy or you know inflating your ego that's no requirement anymore so all of a sudden you're like well is that all i am to that other person too am i part of their circle to inflate or to validate their sense of self to inflate their ego to be their external validation right and so not only do you not need external validation but you're not willing to be external validation for others right and so that's where the circle naturally gets smaller because what comes brighter or what comes to you closer are those friendships or those relationships that don't need that from you 
right? They are friendships or relationships where it's an equal flow of energy back and forth. You're there to support and love and guide one another or give advice or things like that. But there's no um, sense of ego with it in regards to, I need you to validate my existence. You know, I need you to be like, you know, you might have that friend that's like, why do you mean you're not coming out? You always come out. You know, it's not going to be the same without you. Their sense of self is dependent on their attachment to you being at that event because there is something there of that energy where they get a kick out of you being with them or does that make sense? And it's kind of like when you don't need that anymore, you don't want that energy coming to you anymore either. Mm. And so that I feel like when your circle starts to get smaller, be like, wow, okay, I know I'm doing some amazing work on myself because I'm all of a sudden not reliant on many relationships. I'm only like really wanting to pour my energy into three or four or two or one, <laughs> you know, really solid, loving, kind, non judgmental relationships. And I think it's so important when you're on the spiritual path to have at least one person that you have in your circle that you can confide wholly and completely your experience. There is something so valuable with that. And it doesn't matter if they're spiritual or not. For you to be able to speak openly about your experiences and what you're going through, not only opens and expands the person that you're sharing it with, but what it also does is sends confirmation to your guides, to your your intuition, to your higher self that you're receiving the messages. It expands you when you are able to share. It's so important if in the end, <laughs> look, <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. If you are needing that one person, Vanita, me, reach out to someone spiritual that you know, that you trust, that you resonate with. It's so important for you to have that one person that you are able to share. And one person can represent the whole world. I love that so much, Nicole. I was very fortunate because even though uh, my kind of journey, my awakening happened right when the pandemic started. So I literally was completely by myself. And <laughs> I was so grateful because the friendships that I had, you know, they supported me, even if they didn't understand anything that I was going through, for them to just listen to what I was sharing. And I will be honest, there was a certain amount that I could share comfortably. And then there were some that I was like, okay, this is just too much, right? And so what I would say to others is that, you know, obviously you have your friends, share whatever you can with them safely that you feel like they can handle and, you know, support you with. And then, you know, nowadays, as much as I'm not always the biggest fan of social media, for me, it really did help because somewhere down mm -hmm. the line, I started to find people in Facebook groups who were also going through a similar journey. I was like, okay, I can like connect with someone. We can share our similar experiences and support each other in a different facet, right? And so I did that. And then when I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for, I just made my own group. I found a couple of people that were all going through some deep healing. And I just kind of created my own group and it's four incredibly amazing women that I'm still in touch with. We actually even did a trip together. We all met up for the first time last year and we still connect. We try to connect every week and we are still supporting each other in our journey. So, you know, there is this element of don't be afraid to like look outside of your immediate circle. If you're not finding something, there are so many people. I mean, Nicole and I connected on Clubhouse and here we are, you know, a couple months later, like I feel so connected to her, even though we've only known each other a couple of months, right? So it's not even yeah. about time. It's just an energetic thing where you just feel a connection with someone and you feel that ease and that comfort knowing that, you know what, they understand because they've been in their own journey they get where I'm at and we can support each other in a way that doesn't need anything from each other it's just like I see you I hear you I that's it I think to me the mm -hmm. most valuable thing and you know this is one of the reasons that I do this podcast is for people to know that 
each one of you has your own story and all of you deserve to be heard, seen, and listened to. And it's such a priority because that's something we didn't get. A lot of us didn't get mm -hmm. that. And we're getting an opportunity now to say, you have to put a little bit of effort, but you got to just get out there, find those people. If it's not in your circle, find them. And, you know, there's just so many different avenues. And I know I personally did my own thing to find that. And my circle is very small, but I'm so grateful for those few people that I know who are not judging me in any way. When I show up, they just receive me exactly the way that I am. I don't need to look a certain yeah. way. I don't need to be a certain way. I don't need to say anything. There's no, there's no requirements. And that's a beautiful place to be in where you can offer that space to each other. I agree completely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. I I definitely um I definitely couldn't see my life go going any other way now. You know? And I I think it's true. It's like the connection and the community, the sense of community, whether it's in person or online, um you'll know a hundred percent. There'll be no question, no confusion when you found someone who's on your vibration, whether it be a friendship or romantic you know, there's no confusion. There's no questioning their energy. If you feel like you've got questions coming up or you need to clarify with someone about, oh, what do you think about this person? Mm -mm -mm. Just know that those who have the questions already know the answers, you know? So it's just like when you find people that are your people <laughs> for where you are now, and that of course can always change too, it's like, it, it, there is no question. It's just like your hearts have known each other for a long time, you know? So I love that about the spiritual community too. Very easy. Yes, mm. yes. Oh, I love it so much. Um, Nicole, you and I could just keep like chatting and chatting. But no. <laughs> <it's gonna> be... <laughs> um, but we'll I have to <laughs> but I did want to share with everyone that, you know, obviously, um, Nicole is incredibly gifted. She's doing a lot of things. She's launching a bunch of things. And, you know, she just shared that she had released her like, you know, a podcast episode, which I'll be very excited when I get to check that out. But all of Nicole's information will be in the bio section everywhere that this gets posted. So if you're feeling her vibe and her energy and you want to connect with her, um, you know, all of that information is available to you. And I'm just so excited that Nicole joined me today. We've had this incredible chat and I wanted to offer the space if you would like, Nicole, if you wanted to, you know, channel a message for us or pull some cards. If there's anything you're feeling joyful and inspired to do, it's not a, uh, not something that is needed, but if you would like. Yeah, I've got a channel coming through, so um, let's pull that through. Every, everybody loves a good old channel. Yes. All right, so this is for everybody listening who's just listened to the episode. Thank you. Mm, it is, it, there's so much love here for you, okay? And it, it is, it's like, if you were to look at the night sky and all the stars above it, okay? this work this spiritual path is not linear it's not a race it's not a competition or comparison it is like the night star the night sky where all the stars are lit up with different brightness and we're all there together right the thing is is your glow allows other stars to glow allows more stars to glow it's not about my my light is brighter than yours no your light is shining the way for showing the other stars to grow grow and glow brighter too. This is really beautiful. They've never shown it to me like this before. No matter where you are, the moment that you can see that everybody has different gifts and abilities and letting go of that comparison or 
that competition with others, the gifts that you have explored and opened up may be the thing that the person that you deem in front of you is needing to open and explore. So don't ever feel like you are only the student, you are the they, they keep coming back to this teacher role. You are the teacher just as much as the student, the people that are teaching you, you have things to share with them. So do not be afraid to use your voice. Do not be afraid to use your voice. Your experiences are so valid with, and you can see how shiny my eyes get when I channel, but it's like your experiences are valid to share with others because they help. It helps them open up their stories too. And they're just saying, just play, just play, play, play with your gifts. Like the child and Christmas unwrapping something they've always wanted. Whatever it is, whatever it is that your heart has desired for you to have this gift, just open it. It's yours already. Your heart's been trying to tell you that this is yours. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I love that the way they showed me that it's like, you know, when you're writing your Christmas list and oh, dear Santa, I wish I had my clairvoyance opened. I wish I was able to talk to the angels. Oh, Santa, I want to know, you know, whatever, whatever this part of, of this part of the gods and goddesses means. If you are thinking about it and wishing and desiring for that gift, you already have it. That desire is the invitation for you to open and play with it. Oh, I really love that. Right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Very, mm -hmm. very powerful, Nicole. Oh my goodness. <laughs> People are going to have to hit the replay on that part. Like there's a lot of <laughs> great stuff in there. I was like, oh, I got to listen to that too. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. so amazing. And I just, when you were talking, Nicole, like, you know me, I'm a very visual person. So I'm literally seeing the sky and all the stars and every single star is like shiny and sparkly and hanging out with every other star. And, you know, to me, that's so much about what, you know, I'm doing here is about really reminding everybody how incredibly special and valuable and gifted each one of us are, right? And for us to actually believe that we are and yeah. just the messages that we're receiving today from what you've shared, not just your journey, but the channel to just, you know, come back to self and know that you're so amazing. You're so valuable and there's support, there's love, there's nurturing, and you have a team of people who are just waiting to support you. If you just ask, and I'm guilty of this myself, so I know I can say it is we all have a beautiful, beautiful team that's there to support us. And all we need to do is ask. We are never, never, never alone. That's it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Nicole. This has been so incredible. Thank you to everyone that's tuning in today or in the future to hit the replay. Just, I can't wait for you to listen to all the beautiful messages and things that Nicole and I have talked about. And I am so grateful to you, Nicole, and for your team to bring through all these amazing messages for everyone. And I can't wait to catch every one of you on the next episode. Mm. Thank you, Vanita. Thank you, love. Thank you for having me. So welcome. I love you. I love you. Arr.